Welcome back to the Fieldcraft Survival Channel, guys. I am Mike Hernandez, your resident vehicle guy here at the company. Today, we're gonna be discussing preventative maintenance uh, with a slight twist in a way I don't think gets addressed enough. Let's get started. So recently I've racked up just a little under 15,000 miles on my truck uh, on some of the content trips that we've done, but also the shows, normal day-to-day -day driving. Um, and I have implemented a pretty regular washing regiment to the truck because of how soiled it's been getting and because of some of the locations that I've been, right? If you guys are full timers, it may be a little harder for you to do this more regularly, but if you're at home, you know, it takes a few minutes, you can uh, do these steps and get your rig squared away. Before we get to the, the actual process of it, uh, I wanna talk about like the importance, right? Uh, I've outlined five reasons why I think this is important for you, but it is for me. I've seen some guys add more or take off. Make this your own, right? These aren't like hard line, this is how it is, and that's all there is to it. The number one reason why I think you should add regularly, let's say bi-weekly maintenance scheduling uh, with washing to your rig is to protect it, right? If you're, in a certain area that sees a lot of snow, you need to consider that there's also gonna be a lot of salt on the ground. You know, Not everyone is gonna be in the Bonneville salt flats like Fieldcraft Mobility. By the way, I'm still washing that stuff out of there. I'm probably like five or six washes on the truck. But you do need to protect it from that salt because it is corrosive. It can get into places, cause some, some damage, and you wanna protect it from that. So salt's one, also snow, but even rain, right? Uh, if you're in an area that sees a lot of acid rain, or rain that falls through that disgusting, you know, pollution cloud that sits over your city, that stuff's getting transferred into your rigs, paint. So protect it from that by regular washing. You know, it creates stains if you're not, but worst case scenario, rust and just eat through paint and parts that are on there, right? The other element that you should consider is wildlife. I have seen, and you all know it, man, there's like that one car, maybe at your office building, that the birds just wreck. They're just laying hate all over that thing or you come out and you know that stuff can really damage your paint and cause some issues if you're not washing that stuff off so the number one reason that i think you should be doing this is to protect your rig number two your resale value right i'm not saying that you're gonna get rid of these rigs a lot of us guys who are car guys get super attached to these things they're gonna stay with us forever but but even on that mindset, right? We want to make sure that this thing that we're investing a lot of money on that typically aren't really great investments money-wise are going to maintain their resale value, right? Some guys spend big money. Some guys spend a lot. Hey, to each their own. Let's maintain the resale value on it. Okay. That's number two. And number three, safety. If you have a rig that's got bird crap all over the windshield and you can't see through it, you're going to have a safety issue. I think majority of us are going to see mud though, right? Mud or let's say snow or things that could stick to your windshield, to your windows, to your, your, your mirrors, but even like your cameras, right? From a recreational standpoint, or if I'm like trying to evade or get away, or I mean, I, that's worst case scenario, but most of us are just recreating, you know, and I have my babies in there or my dog, my wife, dude, I, I don't want my rig in an unsafe condition that's going to maybe potentially hurt somebody, right? So that's number three, improve uh, safety, clear mirrors, your cameras, broken windshields, stuff like that are also part of that. So let's get to number four. Uh, there are health benefits of cleaning your rig, right? If you're, let's say, in Baja and that silt comes over your hood, like we all know it's going to do. Even here in Arizona, we have silt beds, you know, and as soon as you hit it, you're just going to get that puff of dirt straight through your vents, but also if it has anything that you are allergic to, that's going to cause a problem for your health. Again, I am a family man, right? I have three children, wife, dog, you know, if they're in the rig, I do not want them breathing that crap in, causing them issues, you know, maybe you have asthma or breathing issues, you know, that's, that's, a, that's something that I don't wanna deal with, I wanna have fun. And the fifth and final of the list is fuel efficiency, in my opinion. You know, I talked about hitting almost 15,000 miles my MPG really isn't that great in this current setup, right? I mean, I'm seeing, you know, 12 MPG 
And that's, that's you know, being generous on this rig. Now, my EcoDiesel does see something like 22, 24 MPG on 37s, but the big truck, it, it's, it doesn't have the EcoDiesel. If you are packing on a lot of weight when it comes to mud, when it comes to, you know, the stuff that you're going through, like all the salt and stuff down there, that can add up, especially if you have like wheels that just have all that stuff just caked in there and you're not leaving it alone, it'll be all imbalanced. Um, it'll cause some um, some performance issues for your fuel economy, right? Now, I drive a Jeep, they're like bricks in the winds. There is no aerodynamics. I think there was a, 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 a graphic that all of us Jeepers post. It's like a cow in a wind tunnel and a cow is like more aerodynamic than these bricks that we drive. But again, if you're traveling 15,000 miles and you're concerned about your MPG, your fuel efficiency, you need to clean that stuff up. It will easily pass through um, and create a situation to where your vehicle will perform the way that it needs to be. Those are the top five reasons why I think you should be adding this to your maintenance schedule. Now that we've gone over the top five reasons, I have some products here that I wanna show you that I'm gonna be using for today's video. The good guys at Stable, 303 products, uh, two different companies have provided all the stuff that I use and have been testing out. A shout out to you guys, I appreciate you for partnering with us on this video. As I start showing you some of the products that we're using, uh, we will go through kind of a top-down approach in the way that I systematically clean um, our rigs. Make it your own. This is just a real logical way of doing it. Keep in mind that this is a car wash video. We are not detailing, you know, we're not taking a clay bar to this. We're not polishing. This is just purely a car wash video. Uh, let's get started with that. Everything you've seen being used today, guys, will be linked in the description. Make sure you check out 303 products like I previously stated. So we're gonna go through a, a couple steps that I like to uh, use to organize the way that I am working on car washes, okay? Like I previously stated, this is just a wash video. We're not, we're not gonna be detailing or anything like that. This is just to get this thing clean and in a manner that you can use it. When we start off, the first thing that you want to do is get eyes on it. Stage your rig, get it ready to where you're gonna wash it. You know, typically it's by a water hose. I don't use a pressure washer on my truck or like my uh, my motorcycle because it's got a wrap on it. But if you have a pressure washer, that's also a good time to, to kind of get that out. As you're walking around your rig, get eyes on it. War game, identify problem spots. For me, behind the rear bumper, on the undercarriage of, of my truck, I had a lot of salt and mud still attached to that, even though I washed this thing like five times prior or after, sorry, um, our last trip. Get eyes on it, war game, that's step one. Now step two, uh, you should prep your products, right? But I usually use two buckets and that's just to separate and prevent like cross-contamination or damaging my rig. The reason for that also is if you're in a dry climate like I am here in Arizona, when I start to rinse, it could potentially create like a film or just move some of the stuff around and make you know it counterproductive as I'm going through it. So I want this to be ready to attack the problem areas that I need to, just because I'm dealing with you know no humidity here in Arizona. For those of you guys who 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 have that, I guess it's going to be a little easier for you. But as you're getting your eyes on it, make sure that you're also, if you can, avoiding direct sunlight. Uh, direct sunlight sunlight will also evaporate the water pretty quickly for you too, and it could potentially cause the same you know, sunspots and stuff that I was talking about when it dries. So get eyes on it, walk around, identify those things, move the truck if you need to, get out your products and start prepping your bucket. The two separate buckets, and I use a minimum of two, is because one is gonna be for my tires and, and wheels, and the other one's gonna be for the actual body of the truck. The main reason for that is your is your wheels will have some brake dust. Some will have a lot if, if you have an issue or if that's just you know the material that you're using. I don't want to rub or use that same sponge on the body of the truck or on the paint or even on the wrap because that's just gonna cause more damage. I should also note that all of this stuff you can get at Walmart, at your local O'Reilly's, you know, your parts place, this stuff is all in stock. Oh, every time I go in there, it's there too, right? So you can go pick it up there. This is the sponge that I use for wheels and tires only, more the wheels than anything. And then I have a softer one that's a little bit more fancy for the body because I wanna take care of that. So I do use their soap. Um, I'm prepping one bucket for wheels and tires and I'm prepping one bucket for the body. And then I do have some soft brushes and hard bristles for certain buckets. I'm definitely not using these on the body of the rig. We're gonna scratch that up, I don't wanna do that. But these will do great for really messed up wheels and tires, okay? I will not use the hard bristles on the rims because I could potentially scratch those up. This is for the tire. Again, all that will stay on the tire bucket, everything else will go there. Once those are prepped, the very first thing I wanna do is actually rinse and wash the wheels and tires. The reason why I wanna do that is because I want to eliminate any possibility of whatever 
you know, uh, brake dust or, or mud or anything on there, we'll splash and get uh, on the rest of the body or, or on the rest of the vehicle, you know, at the end of it. So I'll prioritize that first. First thing you do is you get in, you rinse those wheels and tires. You can see here on my truck, I didn't have a lot of mud on the rims, so I don't need a brush or anything more aggressive than just the uh, sponge that I'm using to wash the rims. So first you rinse the wheels and tires. I wash the rims with soap and water. And on this specific wash, I did have a lot of stuff stuck to my tires. So what I'm gonna use is a product here, the wheel and tire cleaner. This stuff is really cool because the first step process to it is you just go in and you just spray it all over your tires. And what's cool about that is it turns like this purple hue when you first apply it and then you walk away, leave it for a few minutes um, as you're doing the other three or four or, or how many you have as it starts to kind of attack that, that stuff that's stuck to your, your, your tires. What's also cool is as you begin to scrub it with that hard bristle and this is just the tires, the, the color will change white, letting you know that, that it's done its job and it's, it's ready to move on. If it's still purple as you're looking at it, then wash, rinse, repeat, right? Finished all four wheels and tires in that manner, rinsed them off, and then the next step, we are gonna start at the top of the rig. It's a top-down approach. The reason why we stop at the top of your rig is because we don't want to cross-contaminate the rest of the rig with, it's just a logical process, right? If you don't start there or you end on the top and you're, you're washing things down, that's gonna naturally, through gravity, mess up the other stuff that you're doing. So after your wheels and tires, rinse off the top, okay? So as we're rinsing, the top's good. We're getting stuff out of the you know little ring gutters on the side cooks, the little crooks and crannies of that. I have a, a removable top, so sometimes stuff can get you know, messed up in there. Make sure you're doing that. And then the next direction you're gonna go is the two sides, the, the, the passenger and the driver's side. Once those are done, the next is going to be like your hood, your windows, your windshield, um, and everything 360 around your rig. And then you're gonna finish the rinse process with your front grill and bumper and your rear tailgate or backside and bumper. And that's the logical way that you're going to rinse. The cool thing about washing is it's in the exact same pattern. So once you've established that everything's rinsed off, uh, you start with the top, you use your soap. You can use just, I believe it's just the capful on the 303 products. I, I like to use a lot just because I like it more sudsy, but I, I did try it with just the cap and you can do that. Um, you know, use as much as you want. So uh, you get your soap, you start from the top, you apply a liberal or a, a huge amount on it, you make sure everything gets done. And one of the things that you can do from here is immediately rinse off if you're in an area that dries quickly like me. So I'll rinse that off right away. Follow the same pattern, top, passenger, driver's side, hood, windows, front and rear bumper. As I'm doing that, I'm rinsing off to avoid any film or, or dried soap as I'm going through that process, right? So um, this is actually step five, is you wash the same pattern that you rinse, and that brings us to drying. Drying is inter interesting because you can damage your paint or your wrap um, if you're using something that's not intended for it. I mean, back in the day, I think people used to use like t-shirts and stuff like that, that's okay, I guess. But 303 does have this cool waffle weave drying towel that I use, and it's got this really cool pattern on it. It actually feels like a little bit more cotton than anything as opposed to like the chamois that have that weird material. I don't even know what that is. Um, and I like this because it is super absorbent and you can wring it out, okay? So everything's rinsed. I'll even go back and hit the top again just so all that's there and then quickly dry it off with the waffle weave just to avoid those, those spots and those drying spots again because I'm in Arizona, right? It's important to note do not drop this on the ground. You don't want to get like, you know, little dust or, or rocks in it because of all that's coming off on the floor. Hitting this against your paint is just going to wreck it. It's going to create all those little swirls and stuff. Th these are actually pretty cool. We'll see how they, I just started using them. Um, let's see how they last the, the test of time. Once you are done drying, pop open your doors. You want to hit those door jams with a separate towel. Uh, I like to use the microfiber ones. This one is also from 303. Um, I really do like complete kits because it makes it, it makes it easy, right? Hit the door jams, make sure those are done. The reason why I do those at this point is because they have the potential to like push dust or, or dirt when you're rinsing and washing. Now open it all up and get that out, okay? And then once it's all done, 
give it another look, right? Inspect it, see if there's anything else that you need to address. Sometimes I'll miss parts on it, focusing, you know, just on certain sections. I use the same pattern that you use to rinse and wash, okay? After all that's said and done, you can leave it alone. Typically that's where I'm at, but as I'm walking around, because unfortunately Jeep does have a lot of like plastic on the outside, like the fenders, I've already replaced bumpers and stuff like that, so I don't need it. I do wanna hit like my plastic fenders with some form of protectant, right? What's cool about 303, and if you remember at the beginning of the video, my number one reason for washing is to protect my investment, right? They actually have a product that's called 303 Protectant. What's great about this is that it finishes dry, right? There's none of that greasy film. It's got the little dry touch technology to it, but it does protect everything that I spray it on. So I will actually end Get the stuff that I needed with this. Some of my older rigs, like my first JK, as it, as it started to age a little bit, this was a, a, a great way to make the rig actually match each other in the sense that, you know, I would wash the truck, but that plastic would just get old. So if you have an older rig too, consider using this protectant. Keeps vinyl rubber plastic looking like new and longer. But that finalizes everything that we're talking about. Everything is now done. If it is in a position to where you need a detail or you do need a hit, you know, some, some paint correction or whatever it is, you know, the clay bar or whatever the stuff is that you want. Now it's in a place that it can actually do that. But that concludes the process that I take in cleaning the rig. All right, guys, thank you for sticking with me this long through the video. I actually have a hunt coming up, so it's just gonna get dirty again, but I'll use the exact same process when I get back home from that with uh, my son. Can't wait to take him, it's actually his first time. On a, on a big game hunt, he's only eight. Guys, like, subscribe, tell your friends if you have any questions, tips, or pointers, make sure you put those in the description. You know, mobility is a huge pillar here at Fieldcraft Survival. Not only are we gonna be doing trips, but we are also gonna be doing more educational or how-to content and stuff like you saw today. So I appreciate your guys' support. And again, this is Mike Hernandez. I'll catch you on the next one.